Hello dear students, welcome to our channel Diksha Karnataka. As you all know, we have started a series where we are discussing on how to approach a particular topic. What all concepts and formulas you have to revise from that chapter, right? So I have already made a video on the very important topic solutions. So please watch that video and revise all the formulas and concepts of that chapter. So in today's video, what we'll be doing is we'll be solving top 30 questions from that chapter. So what you have to do, you have to revise that video, you have to complete all the formulas and then watch this video and try to solve these questions by your own. If you are able to do all these questions, then you can confirm that you have completed this chapter for your KSET 2024 exam. Okay, so now we'll see all the questions. So let us start with the first question. So I have divided all the questions in uh, under the topics that we have discussed. So the first question is from concentration terms. Okay. So first question is an aqueous solution of alcohol contains 18 gram of water and 414 gram of ethyl alcohol. The mole fraction of water we have to find out. Direct formula based question. What is the mo mole fraction of water formula? Number of moles of water by number of moles of water plus number of moles of ethyl alcohol. Right. And number of moles formula is given mass by molar mass. So let us do for let us calculate the number of moles of water 18 given mass by molar mass is 18 will get 1 and number of moles of ethyl alcohol that is C2H5OH if you calculate its molar mass will be 46. So you have to take given mass is 414 divided by 46 will get 9 right. So now let us calculate x of the water that is your 1 by 1 plus 9 that is your 1 by 10 will get 0 0.1. So the correct answer is option C, 0 0.1, okay. Very easy question and direct question. Okay, next question has come a statement uh, based question from the topic solubility. We under solubility, we have two types, solubility of gas in a liquid and solubility of solid in a liquid. So this part is solubility of gas in a liquid increases with. So we know when pressure will be more, pressure if more and temperature is less, solubility will increase. So the, for this one, the correct answer will be increase of P and decrease of T. That is option A. Okay. Next question. Henry's law. Very important topic. Okay. More questions. We have to focus on Henry's law more. Okay. Now question is the Henry's law constant for solubility of N2 gas in water at 298 Kelvin is given to us. The mole fraction of N2 in air is 0 0.8. The number of moles of N2 from air dissolved in 10 moles of water at 298 Kelvin and 5 atm pressure is lot of data is there so let us break them in uh, small small uh, sentences first of all kh value is given to us that is 10 to the power of 5 atm next mole fraction of n2 is given to us that is 0 0.8 in air okay and then we have total pressure is 5 atm and we have to find out that this is in air right we have to find out how much N2 will dissolve in water. So first of all, let us calculate the pressure of N2. Pressure of N2 will be mole fraction of N2 into P total. So if we solve this, we'll get 0 0.8 into 5. That is your 4, right? So now we'll use Henry's law. P of N2 is equal to KH into X of N2, okay? So again, I can substitute here as N of N2 divided by N of N2 plus N of water. But here you have to remember since number of moles of water will be more and uh, very more as compared to number of moles of N2. So we can ignore N of N2 here. Number of moles of N2 we can neglect because it is very small. So now we can just substitute the values and check here. So P of N2 we got 4 atm. KH value is given to you 10 to the power of 5. Right, N of N2 we have to find out and number of moles of water is 10. Right, so if we solve this, we will get 4 into number of moles of N2 we will get will be 4 into 10 to the power of minus 4. Right, so the correct answer for this is option A. Okay, little tricky one, not tricky, I'll tell little lengthy question, not very direct, but yeah, Henry's law you have to prepare. Okay, next again uh, is a statement based question from Henry's law. KH value is same for any for a gas in the solution. So it is not same for the same solvent. When you change the solvent, the KH value will differ. So this statement is incorrect. Next one, 
higher the value of kh more is the solubility of gas we already know that p is equal to kh into solubility so solubility will be equal to p by kh so it is inversely proportional right so this statement is also wrong now kh value increases on increasing the temperature of the solution this statement let us understand properly see when you increase the temperature what will happen to the solubility of a gas in a liquid solubility of a gas in a liquid will decrease if solubility will decrease as we just saw it is inversely proportional kh will increase right so what i can say kh value will increase on increasing the temperature of the solution so option c is the correct statement next easily liquefiable gases usually have lesser kh so this is wrong statement usually have more kh value right so for our question number 4 the correct answer is option c okay next question again from henry's law the kh value of different uh, gases are given to us for argon carbon dioxide formaldehyde and methane we have to arrange them in the increasing order of solubility here we have to remember if kh value is more solubility will be less and vice versa okay so now let us list down these gases and their kh values and then we will compare so first is argon then we have co2 and then it is formaldehyde and next given to us is methane let us write down their values 40.3 uh for carbon dioxide it is 1.67 for formaldehyde it is 1.83 into 10 to the power of minus 5 and this one is 0.413 right so you see the minimum value is for hcho so the solubility will also be maximum for this one this is compound 1 2 3 and 4 they have given you here the compound numbers also so fourth will the uh, third one will be the maximum solubility so you can see option b and c we can eliminate we are left with option a and d now let us check the next one so next lowest value is your fourth one right 0.413 so the after 3 the option that comes is 4 so that will be our option number a so we can eliminate d also right so the correct answer for question number 5 is option a okay next question again from henry's law 5.5 mg of nitrogen gas dissolves in 180 g of water at 273 kelvin and 1 atm pressure due to nitrogen gas the mole fraction of nitrogen is 180 g of water at 5 atm nitrogen to pressure is approximately okay so this is like a comparison based question you have see p1 is equal to kh into x1 and p2 will be equal to kh into x2 so what is your first pressure given to you 1 atm it is the first pressure given to you 1 atm and the p2 is 5 atm so i can write p1 by p2 is equal to x1 by x2 then p1 value is 1 p2 value is 5 x1 what is the value 5.5 mg dissolved in 180 g of water so i can write x1 will be equal to 5.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 by 28 divided by 5.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 by 28 plus 180 by 18 that is 10 right this value we will substitute here divided by x2 so now we have to solve this uh, equation and we have to get the value of x2 right so if you solve this value you will be getting the answer for this as x2 value will come 1 into 10 to the power of minus 4 okay so please uh, do the calculation part and check it so you can eliminate this part also so we'll get the correct answer as option d calculation part please do it and check the answer if you do not get the answer please comment it i'll look into it okay next question uh, next question has come from another important topic raul's law okay very important topic vapor pressure of the pure liquid a and b is given 450 and 700 so let us first write down this data p not a is 450 p not b is 700 okay when you read the question no don't read the whole question at a time first read it and write down the datas and then you can uh, analyze the question proper temperature given if the total vapor pressure of the solution is 600 so p total is 600 then the composition of the mixture so we have to find the mole fraction of xa and the mole fraction of 
B and mole fraction of A. So I know this formula P total is equal to P naught A X A plus P naught B X B. In place of X B I can write 1 minus X A. Let us quickly substitute all the values. P total is 600. P naught A is 450 XA and P naught B is 700 into 1 minus XA. So you can see this is one equation with a variable, one variable. So if you solve this, we will get XA is equal to 0 0.4. Then automatically you can subtract this from 1 and we will get XB is equal to 0 0.6, right? So the correct answer for this one will be your option A. Easy question and direct question. You should only know the relation between XA and XB. Okay, next question. Yeah, this is very simple. Uh, ideal and non-ideal cell uh, on the, the solution A contains acetone dissolved in chloroform and solution B contains acetone dissolved in carbon disulfide. The deviations you have to tell, right? So first what we have? Acetone and chloroform. One solution. This is my solution A. In solution B, what we have? In solution B, it is given acetone and in carbon disulfide, okay. So you can see these two are polar components, right? There will be some interactions here. So this will show you AB interactions will be more. So it will be negative deviation. Carbon disulfide is a non-polar molecule, right? So the interactions will be less. So you can say this will be a positive deviation. So for this, the correct answer will be option D, negative, and then for solution B, it is positive deviation. Option D will be the correct answer. Okay, next, okay, this is also a very simple question. We already have discussed in the table also in that video, in ideal solution and non-ideal solution, okay. So in ideal solution, we have delta H mix is equal to 0, delta V mix equal to 0, delta S will be greater than 0 and delta G will be less than 0, right? So these two points are given in the options. So you can see delta S mix correct, uh, this part is wrong because it should be greater than 0, this part is also wrong. Here this is correct, this is wrong. This part you can see this part is given correct but this part is wrong. In the third or uh, like fourth option, delta S mix is positive and delta G mix is negative. So the correct answer for this question is option D, okay? So you can see just by learning the table where we have mentioned the difference between ideal and non-ideal solution, one question can be solved, right? So a very important topic that one also, okay? Next one is your relative lowering of vapor pressure. The relative lowering of vapor pressure of a dilute solution of glucose dissolved in 1 kg of water is 0.002, molality of the solution, okay? So this question is little important. So I have marked it because it is a concept mixed with concentration terms also and your colligative properties also. So for this one formula, please note down what is the formula of molality when mole fraction is given x2 by x1 into m1 into 1000. Okay. So this is the formula for molality when mole fraction is given to us. Now let us see the question relative lowering of vapor pressure that is delta P by P naught is equal to XB and that is given to you 0 0.002. So can I say now XB is equal to 0 0.002 then what will be XA value? 1 minus 0 0.002 that will be equal to 0 0.998 okay. So now what you have to do just you have to substitute you see 1 kg of water is given so let us substitute the values molality X2 will be 0 0.002 x1 will be 0 0.998 into what is the molar mass of water 18 into 1000 okay so if you solve these all values we will get m is equal to 0 0.111 okay so please solve the numerical part do the calculations and check you will be getting as option c as answer okay so this one i'll tell little tricky question we should know this formula so that we can solve it in a quick way Okay, now next question number 11, this is very important topic, colligative property. So till now what all important topics we have done, we have seen many questions from Henry's law, Raoult's law and then we are coming to elevation in boiling point. The rise in boiling point of a solution containing 1.8 gram of glucose is 100 gram of solvent is 0.1 degree Celsius. Molar elevation constant you have to find out, direct formula based question. 
nothing to think much let us just write down the formula delta tb is equal to kb into m right now you see glucose is a non electrolyte solute so i will be one we need not consider that so kb will be equal to delta tb by m okay so now substitute the values what is the delta tb value given to you 0.1 degree celsius you need not convert it into kelvin okay whenever the difference is given it can be in any units okay now molality formula is number of moles of solute 1.8 by so i'll write here molality separately we can calculate uh given w is 1.8 1.8 by 180 given mass by molar mass into 1000 by what is the mass of the solvent given 100 g of solvent okay so if we solve this we will get 18 by 180 so we'll get 1 by 10 we can substitute here directly molality value as 1 by 10 so 10 when it goes if you multiply we'll get 1 right so answer will be 1 kelvin kilogram per mole okay so the value of kb for this question is option d 1 kelvin kilogram per mole okay this was a direct formula based question okay next question is solute x dimerizes in water to the extent of 80% 2.5 g of x in 100 g of water increases the boiling point by 03 0.3 degree celsius molar mass of x is this question is important very important question because it includes banter factor okay this concept is there we have to understand it carefully first of all our formula for delta tb is what if it is a non electrolytic solution i kb into m so now first you read the question and think which values are given and which values are not given okay so you can see uh, 80% this is what this is not i this is alpha value okay alpha value is 0.8 or 80% means we can write 0.8 okay next 2.5 for molality i can write like this i into kb into for m2 i can write w2 by m2 into 1000 right this is my formula now see the values given so 80% is alpha 2.5 g is w2 so let us all mention all the values 2.5 g is w2 100 g that is your w1 is 100 g right and then delta tb delta tb is 0.3 delta tb is 0.3 so which value is missing here i value is not given to us right so first first duty is to find the i value so how to calculate that we have to use alpha relation the degree of dissociation so what is the relation of uh, dimerizes sorry so it is association so we have to take the formula of alpha for association so at this formula also i have discussed in the video of the formula list you have to remember alpha is equal to i minus 1 whole divided by 1 by n minus 1 now let us quickly substitute the values 0.8 is equal to i minus 1 by dimerizes means n value will be 2 so 1 by 2 minus 1 so now let us calculate the i value we'll get 0.8 i minus one divided by minus one by two. So if we calculate this part, we'll get one minus i whole two, two minus two i. So I'll get ah uh, two i is equal to two minus zero point eight, right? That is equal to one point two. So i value will be zero point six. Okay. So now we substitute this value here zero point six into Okay, KB value has to be given in this question. KB value will be zero point five two Kelvin kilogram mole inverse. Okay, this value should be given in the question that is missing data. So after this, you can multiply zero point five two into W two value is two point five. M two we have to find out and thousand and W one is hundred. so if you solve this completely if you have then m2 value will be getting is 26 okay so after calculation the correct answer for this question should come option c do the calculation properly the point you have to remember is first from this data we have to find i value correctly after that we will substitute here 80% is the alpha value okay not i value okay so students this question is little lengthy one okay but important banter factor where i is not 100% whenever 100% dissociation is not there we have to use this alpha formula okay 
Fine. Now let us go to the next question. On adding a non-volatile solute, okay. So question has come from your freezing point of water decreases to 0 0.186 degree Celsius. Calculate delta Tb if Kf value is given and Kb value is given to us. Okay. So what formula we know? Delta Tb is equal to Kb into m and delta Tf is equal to Kf into m. Right. I will take the ratio of both of them. So what I will get? We have to calculate delta Tb. So delta Tb will be by delta Tf will be equal to Kb by Kf. Right. So I can write delta Tb is equal to Kb by Kf into delta Tf. Okay. So now please substitute the values here. Kb value given to us is 0 0.521. And then Kf value is 1.86 and then delta Tf value given to is 10.186. Okay. So you have to just calculate this one. You can say if you cancel here, it will be easily cancel 0.521 into I can write this one as 186 by 1000 and here we can write 186 by 100. Right, so 186, 186 we can cancel, so we will get 0 0.0521. Right, so the answer for this question is option A 0 0.0521. Little you have to know the relations and how to we can cancel the terms. So, this is not a direct question but an easy question. Okay, now let us go to the next question that is your question number 14. So, I will tell this question is little tricky. Okay, not, not only tricky, it has a new formula also. We will learn about it. Let us read the question step by step. A sample of water is found to contain 58% of AB. We have to stop here. What it contains? 58% of AB. So first let us note down this data. AB is a solute 5.8% sorry that means what? 5.8 gram. So I can write 5.8 gram. What is the molar mass given to us for this? 58.5. So molar mass is 58.5 gram per mole. Okay. Now let us read the next part and 9.5 percent of xy2 so there is another solute which is added that is xy2 and what is the percentage given 9.5 percent so i can write 9.5 gram and the molar mass is 95 gram per mole right this much is clear okay now assuming 80 percent ionization of ab so what is ab ionizing how much percent 80 percent so alpha value will be 0 0.8 and 60% ionization of xy2. So, what is the alpha value of xy2? 0 0.6. Okay. Now, the freezing point of water sample is. So, what is the, let us diagram, uh, let us explain this question. We have some water. Here we have added AB and we have also added xy2. Right. So, two solutes are added in this case. Now, they are asking us how, what will be the freezing point of the water if these two solutes are added. And they have given AB dissociates 0 0.8 and XY2 dissociates 0 0.6. So generally whatever normal questions we do, we have only one solute added, right? But in this question, we have two solutes added. So the formula for this one will be delta Tf. General formula first let us write I into Kf into M. This is the general formula when any one solute is added. But when we have two solutes added, the formula becomes Kf I1 M1 plus I2 M2. Okay. So our duty is not now, now to find I1, M1, I2 and M2. Okay. So now let us do the calculation part. So I will erase this diagram first. Okay. Now let us calculate I for both. Okay. What is the formula to calculate I? This is dissociation I minus 1 by N minus 1. So for uh, AB, alpha value is 0 0.8 i value you have to calculate minus 1 n value how many uh, ions will get here a plus and b minus 2 ions so 2 minus 1 right so what i will get i value here will be i can write point 1.8 right so 1 will come here 1.8 will get now let us calculate for x y 2 alpha value here will be i minus 1 by how many you see how many ions are produced in x y 2 we will get 1x and 2y, right? So, total ion will be 3 minus 1. So, it will be 2 alpha is equal to i minus 1. Alpha value is 0 
right so 1.2 is equal to i minus 1 and i will be equal to 2.2 right so i got both the values for a b and x y 2 so my i 1 and i 2 is done now part is to calculate m 1 and m 2 so let us do that part so m 1 will be equal to what w 1 w 2 by m 2 into 1000 by w 1 right so now so let us substitute the values if you have remember this is i am calculating for a b right a b value was 5.8 divided by 58.5 molar mass that was given into 1000 by what is the mass of the solvent let us see uh, mass of the solvent is okay mass of solvent how to calculate see here it is 5.8 percent right that means what in 100 gram 5.8 gram is your ab right then how much water will be present 100 minus 5.8 so that will be your 94.2 so what is the mass w1 will be here 94.2 okay once again understand this one 5.8 percent means 5.8 gram in 100 gram of the solution so total mass of the solution is 100 gram in that solute is 5.8 then solvent will be how much 100 minus 5.8 so that is your 94.2 gram i hope this part is clear so now we'll get this is the molality of ab molality of ab now similarly let us calculate the molality of x y 2 what is the given mass let us see w2 is 9.5 and molar mass is 95 so 9.5 divided by 95 in 2000 by again what is the w1 here 9.5 percent means in 100 gram of solution the mass of the solute is 9.5 gram then what is the mass of solvent mass of solvent will be 100 minus 9.5 so that will be 90.5 right so now we can substitute here 90.5 okay so now we got i1 we got m1 i2 m2 all the data are with us we can just calculate the delta tf so what is our t naught f here t naught f given to you in the question is you can see it is uh, here 273 kelvin right so now we know in the freezing point what will happen the depression in freezing point freezing point will decrease so i can write 273 minus tf the value which you have to calculate is equal to kf so what is kf value kf value for water is 1.86 1.86 into i1 m1 so my i1 value is 1.8 so 1.8 into m1 is this part 58 by 5.8 by 58.5 into 1000 by 94.2 right plus here we have to write i2 value given i2 value we have calculated is 2.2 2.2 into then m2 that is 9.5 divided by 95 into 1000 by 90.5 right so this part we have to calculate okay now after getting this value you have to just calculate the value of tf so if you solve this question the answer you will be getting will be around 265.5 okay so check the calculation once again and you will be getting the answer around 265.6 so the correct option for this question will be option b once again yeah, i'll just revise what is in this question you have to know this formula when two solutes are added kf is equal to i1 m1 plus i2 m2 next for a b we will calculate i1 for x y 2 we will calculate i2 i1 i2 calculation is done then m1 and m2 here also one trick is there what is it 5.8 percent means we should know it is 5.8 percent w by w means in every 100 gram of solution solute is 5.8 gram in the formula which one we need mass of the solvent so we will subtract solution mass of the solution to mass of the solute we will get the mass of the solvent so that is you'll put here again in the for uh, x y 2 is also the same case they have given you 9.5 percent in 100 gram of solution there is 9.5 gram of solute we'll subtract and get the mass of the solvent we'll put here and then we'll put all the formula whichever formula i've written here i'll put all the datas and then part is calculation so i hope this question is clear if any doubt you have in this question little this is little lengthy question 
and uh, very rarely such questions are asked where two solutes are added. If you still didn't understand, please comment it down. I'll clear your doubts. Okay. So next question. Okay. A non-volatile solute A tetramerizes in water to the extent of 80 percent. First of all, what is this 80 percent? Alpha. 0 0.8. 2.5 gram of A. What is 2.5 gram? Mass of the solute. 2.5 gram of A in 100 gram of water. So, what is 100 gram? Mass of solvent. Okay, so I am writing all the data by reading the question. Lowest the freezing point by 0 0.3 degree Celsius. So, what is delta Tf? Delta Tf is 0 0.3. Then the molar mass of A. This is very direct question. One solute is added. You have to calculate the molar mass of A. Right. So, now let us write down the formula. First of all, what is the formula of delta Tf? I into Kf into M. Right. Kf is given to us. From the date, given data, we can calculate molality. Which data is missing? Again, I value is not given, but alpha value is given, right? So, we have to use the alpha formula for association and calculate the I value. So, what is alpha formula for association? I minus 1 by 1 by n minus 1, right? So, alpha value is 0 0.8 and I value we have to calculate I minus 1 by 1 by n, 1 by 4, why n is equal to 4? Because it is tetramerizes, means like it is like this 4A after reaction becomes A4, okay, that is called tetramerization. So, 1 by 4 minus 1. So, if you solve this, we will get 0 0.8 is equal to I minus 1 by, we will get minus 3 by 4. So, if you solve it completely, we will get 0 0.8 equal to I minus 1, 1 minus 3 we can write. Here negative sign I will change and we will get 1 minus i, right. So, we can multiply 2.4 is equal to 4 minus 4i. So, 4i is equal to 4 minus 2.4, 1.6. So, I will get i value is equal to 0 0.4, okay. So, just check this calculation, i value will get 0 0.4. Now, we can substitute in the formula. So, if we substitute here, directly we will get the answer now 0 0.4 into Kf value is 1.86 m value, m value molality W2 by we will directly put 2.5 into m2 into 1000 by W1 that is 100, right and delta Tf given to you is 0 0.3, right. So, if you solve this value for m2 we will get as uh, the molar mass will be coming around 62, okay. So, answer for this question will be 62, okay. So, the next question is which of the following solutions, aqueous solutions has the highest freezing point, okay. So, here the question is little tricky, you have to be careful. Highest freezing point means depression should be minimum, right. So, suppose this is our freezing point, when we, when the depression is minimum, because we know when we add a solute to any sol solvent, the freezing point decreases. So, in which of the following options the depression will be minimum, in that case the freezing point will be maximum or highest. So, now we know delta Tf is equal to I into Kf into M, right. Kf is constant, so we can write I into M into Kf, right. So, what I want to say is we have to check the I M values for all these options and then we have to decide where the I M value is minimum boiling point will uh, sorry freezing point will be maximum. Now, let us check option 1. In option A, we have I value is of 2 much, right and if you multiply both, so for option A, I into M value will be 2 into 0 0.01 that is 0 0.02. For option B, the I value here is 3, right. So, if you multiply this one, we will get 0 0.03. For option C, you know for sucrose, it is a non-electrolyte solute, I value is 1, I value is 1 here. So, if you multiply, we will get 0 0.1. Now, if you see option D, here the I value is 2 and it is 0 0.1, so we will get 0 0.2.
So now you have to check where the i value is minimum. So the i value is minimum, i m value is minimum for option A. So depression will be minimum in that case and freezing point will be maximum. Okay. So the correct answer for this question is option A. Now moving to the next question. Okay, so now we have gone to the next topic that is osmosis. So osmosis consists of both numericals and theory based question. So this is a theory question. The swelling in feet and ankles of an aged person due to sitting continuously for long hours during travel is reduced by soaking the feet in warm salt water. This is because of. So this is because of your osmosis. Okay, so when we put the feet in, the osmos, uh, in uh, salt water, the osmosis takes place because of which relief is get, gained. Okay. So the correct answer for this question is option B. Next question. Which of the following colligative properties can provide molar mass of proteins, polymers and colloids with greater precision? Okay. So this question is from application part of osmosis. So you have to remember this one. Osmosis is a method used to calculate the ma uh, masses of macromolecules. Okay. So the correct answer for this question is option B osmotic pressure direct theory, theory based question okay. next question if 3 gram of glucose uh, molar mass is 180 gram is dissolved in 60 gram of water at 15 degrees celsius the osmotic pressure of the solution will be okay direct formula based question one thing you have to remember here is if uh, in the formula of osmotic pressure we have concentration into r into t where concentration is molarity right for molarity we need in the formula volume of solution but in certain cases if the volume is not given okay in that case what you can assume is molality is approximately equal to molarity and you can do the calculation based on molality also okay so now let us see the question here uh, we can directly put the formula pi is equal to c in case of c here i will take molality formula so molality formula is w2 that is 3 gram by m2 that is 180 gram into 1000 by mass of the solvent is 60 gram into r is 0 0.083 right this one you have to be careful you should not take 8.314 okay that is a different unit so 0 0.083 temperature must be converted to kelvin okay very important topic uh, very important point you must convert it into kelvin so 15 degree plus 273 will get 288 kelvin so now you can just solve it and after solving it you will be getting the answer around 6.5780 okay so calculation part please take care of it check it once again the correct answer for this question is option a okay next one okay which of the sol uh, following pair of solutions is isotonic this is again one application based question isotonic means what the osmotic pressure should be same now what is the formula of osmotic pressure crt right now rt is a constant term right so now when we can say that isotonic solutions will be isotonic if the concentration part is same okay so now we what we have to do is for each of the options we will calculate the c so if both the solutions are having same concentration they will have same osmotic pressure so we have to also consider here i the van der factor now let us do for each option separately and check for this one aluminium sulfate what is the i value you can see aluminium sulfate Al2 SO4 whole 3. How will it dissociate? 2 Al plus plus 3 SO4 2 minus. Okay. So if we can assume complete as dissociation because of a strong salt, right? So what is the number of ions produced here? Total 5 ions are produced. So I value is 5 and concentration is 0 0.001. So I am writing I m value here. We will get 0 0.005. Now for the second part it is BaCl2 so I value here is 3 and the concentration is 0 0.01 so if you multiply these two we will get 0 0.03 so you can see these two values are not equal so this option cannot be isotonic okay we can uh, go to the next option here what is I value I value is 3 here and the concentration is 0 0.001 so if we multiply this one we will get 0 0.003. Now for this one what is again we have just calculated here the I value for this one is 5 and if you multiply these two concentration we will get 0 0.005. Again these two are not equal so option B is also not the correct answer. Now let us go to the next option. In this one barium chloride I value is 3 and concentration is 0 0.01. 
So I what I'll get 0 0.03. For this one also the I value is 3, right? And if the concentration is 0 0.001. So if you multiply here, we'll get 0 0.003. These two are also not equal, be little careful, it is 0 0.03, here it is 0 0.003. So this answer is also not correct. So the correct option will be option D, but let us check it. What is the concentration here? 0 0.01 and I value is uh, 3. So if you multiply it, we will get 0 0.03. And here if you check, I value for NaCl is 2 and concentration is 0 0.015. So if you multiply these two, we will get 0 0.03. So now if for both the for both the solutions the concentration is same so c part is same rnt is constant so we can get osmotic pressures will be same so these two solutions will be called as your isotonic so correct answer for this question is option d okay now next question again a very direct question on the definition of osmosis the pure solvent diffuses out of the solution through the semi permeable membrane the process is called as osmosis correct answer is option c nothing much here okay next osmotic pressure can be increased by okay this is little application based question first let us write the formula of osmotic pressure c into r into t now c i can write as number of moles by volume into r into t okay now let us read the option increasing the temperature of the solution so you can see osmotic pressure is directly proportional to temperature if i increase the temperature osmotic pressure will increase so this statement is correct okay we'll check all the options now decreasing the temperature of the solution so if i decrease the temperature osmotic pressure will also decrease but the question has asked can be increased by so this question this option will not be the correct answer now increasing the volume of the solution okay now you can see i can write pi is inversely proportional to volume right from the formula so if i increase the volume osmotic pressure will decrease right so again that will uh, that cannot be the answer so this is also wrong statement diluting the solution when you dilute the solution concentration decreases concentration decreases means again osmotic pressure will decrease so the correct answer for this question is option a okay next 0 0.06 w by v aqueous solution of urea is isotonic with okay so this one we have to cal do all the calculation little bit. First of all, what is the meaning of this one 0 0.06 W by V? This means we have 0 0.06 gram of solute in 100 ml of solution. Okay, this is the meaning of this statement, right? Now we have to calculate what is the osmotic pressure of this solution. So again what we have to check R and T we need not consider we have to only change uh, see the concentration part wherever the concentration part is same the osmotic pr pressure will be same. So now let us first calculate the osmotic pressure of the given value. So what is the C here 0 0.06 divided by what is the mass urea. So urea molar mass you should know it is 60 right. So 0 0.06 by 60 into 1000 by 100 right volume of the solution percentage it's 100 ml solution so from here i got this data so we'll cancel this one i'll get 0 0.6 by 60 so that can be 6 by 600 or we can write 0 0.01 right so the concentration is 0 0.01 so in which of, of the options the concentration will be 0 0.01 that will be the answer so you can see here also the concentration is 0 0.01 and since glucose is a non-electrolyte solution, I value is also 1. So the correct answer for this question will be option D. Okay. You can check all other options also. It will be different. Okay. Next, isotonic solutions have. So we know isotonic solutions have. It should be same. Okay. Same osmotic pressure. Okay. Correct answer for this question is option C. Next. Okay. Now then another important topic that is Vantov factors. We have some question from here. Dimerization of solute molecules in low dielectric constant solvent is due to. So we have seen certain examples of dimerization of acetic acid in benzene, right? So if you have seen, it is like CH3C, we have OH and CH3COH. So there is an hydrogen bonding formed between the two molecules, right? So dimerization mainly occurs due to hydrogen bonding so the correct answer is option a hydrogen bond next 
विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सोल्यूशन शुड हैव द हाइएस्ट बॉइलिंग पॉइंट ओके सो नाउ वॉट इज डेल्टा टी बी फॉर्मूला डेल्टा टी बी इज इक्वल टू आई इन टू के बी इन टू एम राइट सो इफ आई इन टू एम इज हाई ओके देन बॉइलिंग पॉइंट विल इंक्रीज द एलिवेशन इन बॉइलिंग पॉइंट विल बी मैक्सिमम सो वी हैव टू जस्ट कैलकुलेट द आई एम वैल्यूज फॉर ऑल द ऑप्शन फॉर दिस वन आई वैल्यू इज टू राइट सो देन आई एम वैल्यू विल बी टू जस्ट मल्टीप्लाई टू विथ दिस वन नाउ हियर द आई एम वैल्यू आई वैल्यू इज थ्री सो दिस यू मल्टीप्लाई देन आई एम वैल्यू विल बी थ्री नाउ हियर द क्वेश्चन इट इज एक्चुअली एन एच फोर एन ओ थ्री ओके एन एच फोर अमोनियम नाइट्रेट सो हियर आई वैल्यू विल बी टू सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई हियर आई विल गेट अगेन टू फॉर लास्ट वन इफ यू सी अगेन आई वैल्यू इज टू सो इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई आई विल गेट टू सो द हाइएस्ट बॉइलिंग पॉइंट विल बी फॉर आई एम वैल्यू थ्री विच इज मैक्सिमम करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी ओके इज ई वन नेक्स्ट द वैंट ऑफ फैक्टर आई अकाउंट्स फॉर एक्सटेंट ऑफ डिजोल्यूशन नो एक्सटेंट ऑफ डिसोसिएशन ये दिस इज द करेक्ट वन extent of mobility no extent of solubility also is incorrect so either extent of dissociation or it can also be for association okay both it considers both so according to these options given correct answer is option b okay next when an electrolyte is dissociated in the solution the vent of factor is so here you have to remember whenever dissociation takes place i is greater than 1 and whenever association takes place i is less than 1 okay so the correct answer for this question will be option a greater than 1 now next question a solution of 1.25 g of p in 50 g of water lowers the freezing point by 0.3 degree celsius molar mass of p is 94 kf value is given to you 1.86 the degree of dimerization of p in water is okay so this question is again vanto factor and freezing point mixture of colligative properties and vanto factor so let us first see what we have to calculate so delta tf is equal to i into kf into m right what we have to find out degree of dimerization means we have to find out alpha value so you know alpha value for association is i minus 1 by 1 by n minus 1 right so first of all our duty is to find i value from here and then we can substitute here and find the alpha value so now let us find the i value from here so what is delta tf given uh, lowers the freezing point by 0.3 degree celsius so whenever difference is given you did not convert it into kelvin okay so the difference will always be same in whichever unit you take so delta tf is equal to i into kf value is how much kf value is given to you 1.86 right and then molality so molality is given mass that is 1.25 by molar mass molar mass is uh, molar mass of this one is 94 into 1000 by mass of the solvent is 50 g right so you have if you solve this i value will get around 0.606 okay just check the calculation you will get 0.606 now if you substitute this one in this alpha value will be 0.606 minus 1 by di what is n value you can see dimerization dimerization means n value is 2 so 1 by 2 minus 1 so i can write this one so we'll get this value minus 0.594 divided by minus 1 by 2 this will be 0.394 right 0.394 into 2 if you do somewhere we'll get around 78.8 percentage okay after multiply it with 100 also okay so we'll get something around 78.8 percent so the nearest answer will be 80 percent so the correct answer for this is option a okay next okay this is very very easy question which of the following is not a colligative property so we have four colligative properties relative lowering of vapor pressure elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point and or osmotic pressure right so you have you should be knowing only elevation in boiling point is a colligative property if only boiling point is given sometimes in option that is also not a colligative property okay please keep in mind this but according to the option here this is a colligative property these two are also colligative property 
correct answer will be option B, which is not a colligative property. Very, very important, not a colligative property, right? So, uh, yeah, so this is the last question for this video. We have done with all the questions. So, I just want to tell you which topics you must focus on. So, first of all, please focus on colligative properties. All the four colligative properties with special emphasis on boiling point, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and osmotic pressure. Relative lowering of vapor pressure questions are asked less, but still you have to focus on this topic, okay? Solve 20 to 30 questions on this topic and then give attention for Henry's law. Henry's law question and you can also then next is your Vantoff factor, okay? Vantoff factor. Concentration terms, you should know the general formulas, but not a lot of questions are asked. So, in this chapter, focus on these three topics majorly. Do more numericals on these topics, okay? So, thank you so much. Uh, so, if you have liked this video and if you think this uh, series is being helpful for you, for your preparation, please like the video, share and subscribe with your friends, okay? Thank you so much.